Hey guys, RC here. Episode 13 of Starters Orders 7. Wanted to go through a couple of uh, questions uh, or uh, comments that I had gotten. So let me reach over here. Uh, so Peter Yanni says, uh, check the distance on Cashmere Brown. I did. So we were racing Cashmere at a mile. Uh, and I was basing that off of the stamina bar. But what I overlooked, I guess, is the breeding indicator on Cashmere is five furlongs. So dialing her back to a five, uh, him back to a five furlong. Uh, so good call by uh, Peter for on that. Uh, Gray Mantle said, uh, give Amthal some runs at a mile. And because he likes a heavy track, I would guess turf. So I'm assuming, and I've asked him the question, so let me know in the comments. If they like a heavy track, like Amthal does right here, does that mean, a, is that a turf indicator? Don't know. Uh, so that's something for me to think about. In fact, I believe I had him schedule, I had her scheduled for a race and it was on dirt. I've canceled that and rescheduled to a similar race on turf. So we'll see how that goes. Um, now he did crack on me a little bit. Uh, he said, Amthal has great stats. I think you wasted her best years as a three-year-old running shorter races. Well, the thing is, when you when they come out as a three-year-old, I was looking at the STAM bar, and the STAM at that time was still, you know, in that 10 to 15 percent range, which is a five to six furlong based on what I've been what I've read. Uh, so now they're up to about a mile, but you know, only because I, you know, I think we had, uh, you know, but we never had any decent races in there. And, and I did get him up to a mile. He's been running them all most of the year. Uh, but he also said, um, stick to class four or worse until you get a winner and then bump up to class two and see how it goes. Don't even touch group one to three races or class one until you have a proven winner in class two. So that's something for me to think about kind of going forward. Um, Custard Prophet said, enjoying the save, certainly enjoy, deserves the views you're getting. Thank you for all of you guys by far making this the most viewed series on my channel. Not the most viewed episodes, but all my top episodes are like one-offs. Uh, but as far as like a series or a let's play, by far uh, the most watched save in my channel's history. So thank you. Um, loved it. That was dealing with... All right, Tyler Simmons, who's a friend of mine, uh, he said in real life, uh, this was in response to a breeding question I asked, uh, generally the peak breeding years are five to seven for thoroughbred mares. Fertility begins to decline sharply at about 15 years of age. So... Don't know if the game mimics that, but just something to think about. Uh, most thoroughbreds live to be around 25 or so. So uh, that's a football manager comment. Uh, Stanley Rosella. Uh, I got a comment from a jockey said, horse not breathing easily. Sounds ominous. <laughs> so that's interesting. Uh, let's see. What else was there? Oh, I know what I wanted to look at. If I can find it, I do want to give a shout out. We've got some new, some new guys here. What I'm looking, I'm trying to look on my other monitor. Uh, Gregory Durant just joined uh, today, a few minutes ago, actually. Uh, Damien Jo or Yo uh, joined yesterday. Uh, we also had uh, Louis Pac Norris, Pac No, Pac Lou Lou Lua Pac Nomis. I hope I was even close on that two days ago. Graham Yates three days ago. And I think that's all the new ones. Andreas Merksgard Veer uh, was a week ago. Yep, I think that's the new subscribers here in the last week. All right, well, let's get into some racing today. Taking a look at our horses here. So we've got... Uh, all the horses, we've got five left running still, and this is going to get us into October as we near the end of this season. Um, one of the other guys said he only runs four horses at the most because then it gets too congested. 
I, I don't know. We'll we'll play it by ear, uh, it, you know. And, you know, again, hopefully as the years go by, we can start developing our own breeding. And then uh, I was watching a, a Chris Army video the other day on how to uh, get the horses out of this save or tire them into the pool and then import them into a new pool. Uh, so that's something we may look at doing like right before we retire or maybe like right if we find a good horse that we're going to retire, maybe you know, send them back in to, um, into, into, you know, into the game to be in, cause then you can import them into a new game. That's the whole purpose. So instead of starting back at square one, you can develop over several years or a decade or whatever. And then you can have some of those higher grade horses that you retire into the pool. And then those can be your starting horses in your next save. So something to think about. Um, so anyway, let's get to the races. Are we having any auctions? We don't have a breeder sale until the 14th of October. And that's going to be after all this. So yeah, we aren't going to have anything to watch. We just wanted to get my recording software back on top over the comments and stuff so I could keep track of the time. Thank you for bearing with me. All right, so we've got a couple of winners. Ah, uh, let's see. So who is going to be up first? We're going to skip to next. Skip to the day. And it will be Putin, 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 Putin. So he's got a win and a second place in his last two races. He is going to be running at the Class 1 Grade 3, one mile on dirt. Let's go see how that goes. Let's save that. By the way, I'm recording this on Sunday Father's Day. Uh, happy Father's Day to any of you fathers out there. Uh, let's see, skip this race and result. Anesthesia, Anastasia. That's uh, my daughter's name actually, but it's spelled differently. I ought to put money on that one. I think I'm gonna have to. We're gonna do a max to win. Ah, uh, finish second. Yeah. Cost me money, <laughs> just like real life. All right, we're going to skip this race. All right, there we are. So we're a middle of the pack horse, nine to one, carrying, uh, you know, right, right in line with weights. Uh, we did have, looks like Freeline Fury jumped in on this race. They're the highest rated horse. We were kind of in the mix with everybody else, so I thought this would be one that we might, <clears throat> might be able to get. Oh, they're, they're liking her big time. Moving well and fit, coping well. Tell you what, we're going to put some money on her. And then for me, I don't know. I don't even know what those mean. And you can't choose them all, so. Oh, I didn't want that. Oh, Max Show. There we go. All right, so we've got a couple of bets. Let's go race. I don't think this is the track that gave us problems before. Of course, I forgot which one it was. All right, we're starting in the middle of the pack. A little bit of a slow break, but looks like we recovered quickly. We got out with the leaders. Center of the track. Moving well today. All right, we ease over towards the rail. We're in that second tier, dripping back a little bit. Dripping back, drifting back. All right, now we're going to be in a crowd. All right, he finds some room. Looks like he was about to make a run, but it was uh, Freeline Fury that made a run there. Two and a half furlongs. Freeline Fury's got the running on the outside. We're right on her inside, and we're making the move. She keeps going. It looks like we pulled up. We're into second. Number three horse is Desert Hunter has moved in front of us. Can we hold on for third? It's going to be close. It's going to be close. Freeline Fury does win. And we hold on for third. So at least we're in the money. <coughs> okay. So that picks us up $4,300.
dropped rear, midway, not quicken, six lengths back of the leader, three quarters of a length back of Desert Hunter, and I need to get those silks. Those are Chris Ormy's silks. He's not in this game, uh, but that's the Dallas Cowboys as well. All right. Um, disappointing. I mean, you know, it was a good run, a decent run in a graded race. Ridden in pack, a tri trip appeared to suit well, so I think we've got the distance on him. Anybody there? No. All right. So, Putin, take a look at him. Looks like he went up a little bit, a third place finish in a grade three, so that's good. I'm pretty happy with that. A little bit more winnings. What does that bring him to? 18,638. Not a, not the million dollar horses that I'm used to watching on these uh, channels, so that is what it is. All right, well, let's go ahead and save because it was a decent race. Do we want us to try to schedule him again? Grade two at one mile. All right, so let's look up a mile. And we want to go more towards the end of this, right? So grade one, grade three. Mm. Cragamore Creek looks like a really good horse to be in that particular race. Hmm. Putin is a 77 rated. I don't want to go into the... You know what? Let's do... Let's maybe do that one. That's that's on turf. Let's give him a try there. We'll give him a try. Thing of a thing that that'll do, boy. That'll do, boy. Okay, that's a good one. All right. So Putin's re re entered for the twenty sixth of October. Let's go ahead and get to our next day. All right, Cashmere Brown. So we rescheduled this horse based on the comments that we talked about earlier. So, not the favorite. Second race in Texas. Oh, what the hell did I just do? I hit the wrong button is what I did. I hit the wrong button. A fifth place finish. Ah, okay. Never were in it. Could have settled better. Settled towards the rear, last, and detached halfway, outpaced. All right, yeah, they were all within two lengths, and then we were in the tra we were definitely trailing. Uh, we made we made one hundred eighty two dollars. I guess that's something, but that's horrible. That is horrible. So yeah, coming back that did not help us any. So kind of want to look at another five furlong. And 76 rated. All there is is selling races. Yeah, I don't see anything in there. I'm just trying to see if any of these have lower rated entrance. Or we're just not going to be dominated. I don't see anything, so we're not going to schedule him in another race now. Sorry about that, hitting the wrong button, but doesn't look like we missed anything. All right, so that gets us to third half. So third half, I again entered him in a race based on what some comments were. He's actually the favorite in this class three. All right, well, let's save and then go out to the track. All right, we're favored. Three, three of the betters are picking us. All right, so we're going to go with a max win here. Again, I'm not going to really spend a lot of time betting, but, you know, it is what it is. All right, let's go race. Get it done. On the turf, so we did move this one to turf. Started slow. On the rail, though, so he's able to make up ground quickly. So he gets out with the lead three before he gets pinched against the rail. So he holds his spot. That's good. 
All right, he gets out to the lead, so he's going to be the pace setter. Rapid Heat Lad comes with him. They're extending their lead out over Extra Sensory. Rapid Heat Lad takes the lead. Extra Sensory on the outside. He makes a run. He's up into second. Two furlong pole. We are in third position. Can we find stride? We're coming up on Extra Sensory. We take second, but Gar Garobi's girl coming up on the outside. Do we have enough to hold her off? And can we make a run at the finish? We do. Oh my goodness. We take the lead and at the wire, we have got the victory. That is incredible. What a run. That was a good call. I'm going to have to double check who gave that comment. Uh, but that was really good. So we've got a win. Not a lot in the way of prize money, $6,500. Disputed lead early, led before halfway, inside the final fur, half furlong, driven out. I think that means they were running full out and giving it all they had. So that's good. Ridden as a stalker. We were always going to win that one. Excellent. All right. Anybody up for auction? That's going to be a no. And that is a victory for third half. So I'll be right back. I wanted to check one thing. Uh, somebody had mentioned to have a good jockey. So our jockey is Espinoza. He is auto booked. Yeah, I mean, he's got really good skill, really high honesty. He's 90% or higher in both. Obedience, I was, uh, in fact, Chris Ormy mentioned the other day, he doesn't look at obedience very much because he doesn't really make a lot of specific directions for, um, for his horses. So, anyway, so that's my jockey. So I think I've got a good one in there. You do have to hire a new one every year, but that's okay. All right, let's get to the uh, third half. His uh, his constitution is pretty low, so he can't run quite as often, so we're going to hold off on him. So let's go ahead, but that gives him uh, – he's coming up on 100000 in career earnings. That's a big deal for us. Uh, let's see, this will be October 3rd, and this will be Amthal. Taking a look, not the favorite. All right, actually, we're second, though, second out of five. We're carrying the most weight, highest rating. We're running this one on turf. Diamond Run is the pick. Coping well, very fit, ready to go, same for us. All right, well, let's go see if we can uh, pull an upset possibly. This is a one-mile handicap. We're right up against the rating there. All right, pretty even break by everybody. Right into the first turn, we're out with the lead three. Cash and carrots and five-fold. We pull out with cash and carrots. That's, an, that's a cool name, huh? All right, everybody's pretty close. Nobody's really off the pace. Diamond run in the trailing stalking position. Making a move there. Gets up on our haunch. Basically three abreast. Carnegie at the two furlong. Everybody's coming. Everybody's coming. Carnegie out to the lead. We're coming as well. Diamond run is with us. The one furlong. We nose out in front. We're three abreast, and it's Diamond Run and Amthal. We're back out in the lead. Pulling away now. Pulling away at the wire, and a big win for Amthal. That is a good victory. Pretty happy with that. Well, I'm very happy with that. Nothing pretty happy about it. Prominent early, front rank, stayed on well. One by one and three quarter lengths. Nothing wrong with that. 38.64 payday. Stalker, spot on. The horse did not enjoy the ground. Okay, so we ran on... That's the first win, right? 
outside of the maiden yes so that's the first win all right so a one mile handicap on grass see i don't know what all these mean is that grass and fast? That's good, standard, hard. Likes an average track. So I'm thinking an average track, maybe we want... See, I would think an average track, uh, you would want the uh, dirt, but this is one that they somebody specifically said, run them on turf because they like a heavy track. So we just talked about that. So he's going to go on turf again at another mile. Um, actually, no, he's not. We're going to pull that horse. That's too soon. Too soon. All right, Amthal. All right, Declarations. Yeah, we're going to remove that horse. And we want to look at a mile again. But more turf. Class 3 handicap, 0 to 90. See, I just don't think we're that good. I don't want to do a selling race. All right, we'll just keep him out, but I did want to remove him from that other race. All right, we do have breeders. Did I just miss that breeder sale? Well, I've only got 2.5 million left. I think I want to get the yearlings. Let's see about getting a few of those instead of a breeder. So we're going to wait till the 27th. So that'll be after all of these. So let's finish up two more races, and then I can do that off camera. Uh, let's see, the 10th, 11th. This is going to be Miss Aura. So she finished ninth in her last outing. It was her first race, not in the money. Well, since her first two maidens. And that was a grade three at six furlongs. Do we, oh, she's a hundred, she's a 104 rating. That's right. That's right. But I don't think she's picked to do well here. Because isn't this, I don't know, is this, does this have anything to do with how you're picked to fare? Or is this just your your gate order? If you know, let me know in the comments. Because it doesn't really say. Why is Espinosa not on there? I don't know. He's picked to be auto-booked. I don't know the answer. All right, well, let's get out to the track. That's a big field. All right, Miss Aura. Carrying 129. Right in line with the middle of the pack. So the last time she had an 86, she's up to a 104. We'll see if she can do it. I'm a little concerned. I don't think she's cut out for these grade threes, but I wanted to give her a run. We're on the rail. Breaks well. Out with the leaders. And then settles into a stalking position. It's a pretty short race. We don't want to let the field get too far ahead. And we're going to have to make a move. And number two right there, Ring of Fire, has really blocked us. And we just got pinched right there. Finds a hole through the middle. Got a little lucky there. Indian Bell moved over to the rail to give us a lane. It's still Ring of Fire on our outside. We're up into third. Heading up into second. And we are three abreast at the furlong pole. And she is pulling away with... Half a furlong to go. Can she hold on? Who's on the rail? That's Born. And we hold on and look good doing it. That's a good run by Miss Aura. Very, very nice. 24,300 into the winnings. Progress, mid-division halfway. Led inside the final furlong. Went clear. Good job there. Some performance trip was spot on today. Very, very good news. Very happy with Miss Aura's performance. She's up to 183,000. So this, remember, is a horse that we bought as a racing horse, not as a. Uh, so that gives two group, two grade three wins, two group three wins. 
And I'm guessing that group three and grade three is the same thing. Confirm that for me in the comments if you don't mind, those of you knowledgeable. So definitely a different, a different uh, result. Still a class one, grade three, but that was three-year-olds. This was four-year-olds. So we were running with even horses in that one. Otherwise, I think we want to probably stick with the four-year-olds or maybe drop down to a class two. But she's doing well. I am happy with that. All right. Breeding yearling sales are the 27th. So let's go ahead and do one more race to wrap up this episode. So we started with Putin. We will end with Putin. He's got a first, second, and third. He's gotten progressively worse in his last three races. And let's see, Putin Mogok Ruby is the favorite. It's one of the later races of the day. Right there, middle of the field, three horses. Uh, well, five horses, my bad. Tipsters, all like Mogok Ruby. Mogok Ruby is moving well and fit. So let's put a max bet there to win. And let's go race. This is where we're going to finish up. One mile handicap, two year olds. We're just off the rail. No, is this, this is us on the outside. I thought that was us in there. So we break out well, settle in, move over to the rail. We're pinched in between Secret Dancer and Krasikov. We're out onto the lead pace. Number two, Mogok Ruby is right there with us. Pretty tightly bunched field. Even Mandy Chad is not too far behind. Secret Dancer moves out. It's Mogok Ruby coming. And we are in second. Krasikov is coming up on the outside. She's making a move. We're dropping into third. It's Mogok Ruby, the favorite. At the furlong pole, do we have anything? Can we make a move? We're not making up any ground whatsoever. And we're going to finish third. Mogok Ruby cost us some money finishing fourth. It's Krasikov, Secret Dancer, 1-2. And we finish third in the form book. $660, so we got some spending money. Didn't make up our money for the entry fee. Got the distance well. Didn't have the pace. Okay. So let's check. Another third place finish. So we finished third in a grade three. And we finished third in a class five handicap. And we finished second in a class two handicap. Very good constitution. So let's look at a group two. That's his breeding indicator. So one mile in a group two or class two. All right, right there. Zero to a hundred. But I don't really want to run a handicap if we can avoid it. Looks like that's all that's left, though. Zero to 85. Putin is a 77. All right. See, that's what I don't know. Does that mean we're, we're going to be picked to finish second in the race, or are we starting out of the second gate? Don't know that answer, but we'll book there and I'll need to get in and re-enter some races here. So what I'm going to do is off camera, I'm going to go do the uh, two-year-old sale. This should be the final one of the year. And then we'll come back and finish up the season with uh, whatever races we have left. And then uh, that should finish this ne the next episode. And then we'll come back for the following episode to kind of go through our new incoming yearling slash two-year-old crop 
and uh, see who we're going to sell, how much money we're going to have, and see what new horses we're going to have. And at that point, do we weed out any of these horses, sell them off, or whatever? Uh, I know uh, Chris Ormy will just retire them from the game, uh, but as he said, he had over $100 million, because I asked him about that, and he had over $100 million in the bank, and he says, I don't need the money to sell them, or otherwise I would, and he wanted to keep them out of out of the uh, the stud stud area. So I guess you could geld them if nothing else, geld them and then sell them. But I don't know if gelding hurts their value. But anyway, something to worry about another day, guys. Hit that like button, subscribe if you don't mind, and we will see you next episode here on the track. Bye.